Greetings, cyber truckers and citizens of the internet. This is Rendog and Maximus the Truck coming at you from yet another episode of Let's Play Euro Truck Simulator 2. In the previous episode, we were on our way to the Netherlands to make a delivery. And in this, this episode, my friends, we are going to finish off that delivery. Let's take the ferry right now to go to Europort, which is an eight hour freaking journey on a ferry, which is ridiculous. But we are now in Europe, my friends, and we can now head off to Amsterdam, I think it is, to make our very final delivery to finish off this delivery. But remember, we're on the right hand side of the road now. We're in freaking Europe now, man. So I gotta remember to stay on the right hand side of the road. But guys, it feels so freaking good to be back behind the wheel of Maximus. Oh man. Uh, Got to try and make take this corner a little bit wide. There we go. The last time we tried to take a corner, I drove into the freaking barrier. So, got to try and not do that again. But guys, man, we are trucking once again. And we are about to finish off this delivery to get a little bit more cash. So that we can upgrade Maximus. We're probably going to actually buy a new truck at some point. Uh, the bank has hinted that uh, it is actually possible for us to get a little bit more cash up in our belly at some point. So we might look into doing that. I'm gonna turn on my, turn on my lights. Um, we can actually get a loan out and get a, a better truck. But at the moment, you know, Maximus is basically doing exactly what we need Maximus to do. He's, he's able to make like small deliveries for us. We're making like, I don't know, four or 5,000 euros every time we do a successful delivery. So I'm pretty happy with how Maximus is performing right now. You know, I'm not a greedy guy. I don't want to. I don't want to be a gazillionaire. I don't want to like deliver. I don't know Lamborghinis across Europe for like twenty thousand euros. I mean, who knows? Maybe that's what we'll eventually get into. But at the moment, I'm pretty happy just delivering like bags of seeds, dead bodies, uh, bits of iron and wood, <laughs> barrels, uh, pipes. You know, I'm, I'm I'm happy with these kind of deliveries, man. Uh, you know, eventually we'll move on to, to other deliveries, but for now, I'm pretty happy, man. But guys, I'm, <laughs> I'm super stoked to be playing Euro Truck Simulator 2 again. Uh, such an awesome game, absolutely love this game. It, I don't know, this game like relaxes me a lot. It's one of the most relaxing games that I've ever played, actually. You know, most of the games that I play are, um, you know, like quite stressful, in fact. Like, like even Minecraft is quite stressful because you're always crafting, you always like have to think about what you're going to be doing next. You have to work out what you're making next. You have to make sure that it looks awesome. In this game, you just hit the highway and you just put pedal to the metal and you just freaking go, man. And you just drive. Every now and then, like in the previous episode, we took a wrong turn and uh, yeah, <laughs> kind of failed a little bit there. So I was, I was kind of stressing out a little bit there. But how awesome are these like wind turbines around here, man? This is sweet. Um, oh, we are, we're in the Netherlands right now. Check, we're coming up towards Rotterdam, which is awesome. Um, well, I think we've actually made this journey before though, um, before they patched the game and I had to redo the journey because that sometimes happens with Euro Truck Simulator 2. When they patch the game, if you're in the middle of a delivery, you lose your progress of that delivery. It's kind of annoying actually. Um, really, really, really annoying. But uh, we are making a delivery of an unknown... Oh! 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 Okay, uh, everybody, my bad. We, we, we got a problem. We, we, we got a problem up in here. Uh, please be patient. Uh, I need to do like a 30, a 30 point turn. There we go. Sorry about that. My bad. My bad. <laughs> Still getting used to being on the, on the right hand side of the road over there, man. It's kind of tricky. Alright, let's do this, man. There we go. Alright, back on track. And we didn't get a fine, so that's good. Um, usually we get fined when we do stupid stuff like that, but it looks like we avoided, avoided the fineage over there. I've only got 13,550 pounds saved, I've just noticed. That's not a lot. Man, we need to, we need to up, up our game up in here, man. We need to get way more cash than that. Um, but anyway, <laughs> um, I, I love this game because it's chilled, man. You, even, even though, yeah, I mean, sometimes I mess up and have to like, you know, like, like, like you just witness. But that's one of the awesome things about this game is that you can mess up. It's not, it's not actually that easy. And um, the fact that I'm playing with a keyboard makes it even freaking harder, man. If I had a steering wheel, I think I'd probably be better at this game. But guys, we are on our way to deliver whatever is in this, uh, this cargo container over here. I'm assuming it's another delivery of dead bodies. Um, we seem to make these dodgy deliveries quite a lot in this game. But we're, we are on our way to Amsterdam, I believe, to drop off whatever is in here. Um, I can't actually remember what we're delivering, but 
who cares? We're the driver, man. Like, it doesn't matter what we're delivering, does it? Like, does it really matter what we're delivering? It doesn't matter to me. As long as I got some sweet tunes up in my cab and I'm chilling with my freaking cyber dogs on the highway, I'm happy, man. I'm a happy freaking doggy. But well, guys, in, <laughs> in this episode, um, I, I want to talk a little bit, a bit about something that was really important to me for like a couple years of my life and then it was ended abruptly. And, uh, and I, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you guys why it was ended abruptly. Um, <laughs> it's kind of a funny story. So when I finished school and started uh, university when I was 18, um, I used to, I used to be like some of my favorite bands at the time were bands like Deftones and Soulfly and Korn and like all of these bands that were sort of um, coming out of like the, the out of the skating um, uh, vi or, like the skating trend that was happening in those days. Like skating was like coming back right after after it sort of fell out of fashion or whatever in the 80s at the end of the, the 80s and even at the in the 90s or whatever like skating was suddenly becoming really awesome again and all these awesome bands were like they were all skaters and they, all the music videos they made were, were all like skater videos and I was I, like I was so into that whole culture man I was like skating is so freaking so sweet I want to learn to skate I want to be a freaking skater hardcore freaking new metal skater boy man <laughs> that's gonna be my vibe you know what I'm saying and uh I started listening to Deftones and all of these bands and I really loved it and I was like, you know what, I'm going to learn to skate and, I, and I'd never skated before, like I'd had like rollerblades when I was a kid and I had like one of those cheap ass plastic skateboards, you know the ones that are, they're like made out of plastic, the whole body and the wheels and everything, the whole thing is basically plastic, budget as hell man. I, I had one of those when I was a kid but I'd never actually got a real, like I'd never been on a real skateboard before. So one holiday, like the way my university used to work, we used to have a few, um, like we'd have three months of, of university and then we'd have like a month of holiday. And I used to go and spend that holiday at, oh, what, it, ooh, my bad. Sorry, everybody behind me. <laughs> Man, I got, got a bit distracted there. Um, but I used to go and spend that month with my family at their house. Obviously, I didn't have anywhere else to go. Um, <laughs> it's not like I had my own house. Um, but uh, that my, my parents had like a really big driveway at their house and I thought to myself it was kind of flat it wasn't completely flat but it was like a bricked driveway right and one holiday I was like you know what I'm gonna get myself a skateboard and I'm gonna teach myself to skate like I'm gonna try skate like two or three hours every single day in the driveway until I know how to skate because I don't know how many of you guys have like uh, tried skateboarding but it's not as easy as it looks like uh, skateboarding is actually really hard in fact I'm, I'm gonna go, I'm, I'm gonna put my, my neck on the line and say that skateboarding is actually one of the hardest sports in the world. And let me, let me explain why, right? The closest sport that we can sort of compare skateboarding to is snowboarding, right? Now the difference between snowboarding and skateboarding, and though this may seem obvious, uh, you are attached to your snowboard, right? And in, in, in skating, you are not attached to your snowboard. So for example, um, you, like, say you want to do a jump, right? And in skating, it's called an ollie. Like, say you want to jump over something with a skateboard. You need to lift that board off the ground independently using only the laws of physics and momentum to get that board over whatever you're jumping over. And then you have to land on top of that freaking board again. I mean, whereas if you're on a snowboard, all you need to do is, like, is jump, right? And you're always going to land on the board because you're attached to it. So, like... Skateboarding is, is a crazy sport because there's two separate entities being influenced by physics uh, that need to work in perfect unison or bad things can happen. Your, your own body and the skateboard that you're actually riding, right? Like those are the two entities that need to work in unity. And that is some difficult jazz to manage, man. That is like super, super motor skills that you need to be able to manage that. You need like perfect balance, perfect timing. You need like super confidence to be able to do dangerous tricks or, or, or jump like, you know, like, like you, 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 you're skating on hard surfaces, like, like concrete and stuff, right? If you fall, you're going to hurt yourself, man. It's a, it's a crazy sport. So I thought to myself, you know, it's probably going to take me quite a while to learn to skate because I've never done it before. And like a few of my friends were skaters, but they had been skating since they were like 13, right? So they were actually really, really good. And the last thing that I wanted to do was buy a skateboard, go to university and be like, hey dudes, let's go skating. And then just be like an absolute noob and just embarrass them, you know? 
because like at our university there were places where skaters used to go skate there was like a skate park there there was like a huge courtyard outside the church that that all the skaters used to go and i definitely didn't want to go there and be the noob you know like go there with in knee pads and like be that loser who can't actually skate and then all the other dudes are doing like amazing tricks and all the girls are like oh my god they're so awesome and look at that douchebag over there um i definitely didn't want to be that guy so <laughs> i i still remember the day like um going to the skate shop to buy a skateboard and i kind of did a little bit of research i bought like some skater like skater mags and i read the magazines to try and figure out okay what like what are the best ways what are the, what, like what are the best skateboards to get what do you need to look at like you know i mean and at the time i thought it would just be easy man you walk into the shop you tell the, the shop guy hey bro i want to be a skater give me a skateboard and then he would like give you a skateboard and that would be the end of it but it's actually way more complicated than that man uh, there are so many different variables to consider when you buy yourself a skateboard. But uh, we are, we've arrived at our destination, guys. And um, before we continue over here, I just want to... I'm pressing the wrong buttons over here. I just want to park this trailer. Uh, and then I'll continue continue talking about skating. Um, but I'm sure there's, there's, there's loads of you guys out there who skate too, man. So, like, if you are a skater, let me know. I'd love to know. Let's see. Can we actually get this... No, 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 no. Okay, okay. Uh, I thought we might be able to get this in first time, but... Um, that's definitely not going to happen, I think. Straighten up, straighten up. No, 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 no. Straighten, straighten. Nope, that's, that ain't going to happen. That ain't going to happen. Okay, let's go forward a little bit. All right, all right, all right. Here we go, here we go. This is the one. This is the one, this is the one. No, no, no. Do not scrape that thing. So weird. And swing, 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 swing. Swing, swing, swing. Oh yeah, baby. Oh yeah, baby. Oh yeah, baby. Did I, did I do it? Is that it? Surely that's it. Surely, surely, surely that's it, man. Come on! Do the ding! Do the ding! Oh, you butthole! No! Oh! Oh, man, that sucks! I, I seriously thought that I had it there first time, but apparently not. Alright. Well, we're gonna have to come out a little bit. Try this again. Let's have a look. Come all the way out like this into the, <laughs> into the center of the road again. Oh man, I'm so bummed. I thought that I had it first time there. Alright, here we go. Here we go, baby. There we go. That's looking nice and straight. Nice and straight. Nice and straight. Nice and straight. No, keep straight. Keep straight. Keep straight. Keep straight. There we go. There we go. Beautiful. Beautiful. Beautiful! Bam! That is what I'm talking about! Park that sucker! Yes! That was so sweet! Oh man, awesome! 5,125 pounds! Thank you very much, I'ma take that! And we get a whole bunch of XP for that also, so thank you very much! Oh man, that is awesome! Alright, let's hit the job market guys, we need to get straight back on the road man! We're on a roll right now! Alright, let's have a look, We're, we are currently in uh, Amsterdam, right? So we need to take... I want to try see if we can travel across Europe somewhere. Let's see. Uh, Amsterdam to Duisburg. Duisburg in Germany. That's all. I mean, that's okay. Oh, oh, our plan was to go back to Grimsby, right? Yeah, that was our, our plan was to head back to Grimsby. Let's see, man. What is the highest paying thing back to Grimsby? Oh, yes. Th we wanted to go back to Grimsby because there's an awesome job from Grimsby to, like, somewhere in Europe. So... Yeah, I think we should probably do that. So look, what else is from Amsterdam up in here, man? We can go to London, we can go to Grimsby, we can go to Daysburg. I don't want to go to Daysburg because that's really, really close. Um, we can go all the way back to Grimsby. Although, you know what, man? The, the, the plan was to head to Grimsby. Why don't we, why don't we head into, into... Yeah, let's head into Germany, man. Let's see, maybe we can get a sweet job in Daysburg. 
All right, let's let's go to let's go to Daysburg. We're delivering car parts to Daysburg for three thousand two hundred and eighty pounds. I'm gonna take that gerb. Thank you very much. We're gonna have to head over to the place to to pick up those car parts that we need to collect, uh, and then well, where are we? Oh, oh, okay, awesome. They're already attached. <laughs> All right, let's see. No, no, that that's definitely not the way out. I think this has got to be the way out here, right? Yeah, there we go. All right. All right, sweet guys, we are on our way to Germany, to Daisburg, to deliver some car parts. This is a, a pretty quick delivery, actually. This is gonna, gonna make us like 3,000 uh, pounds pretty quickly, which is awesome. Um, but what the jazz? Why am I in this ugly ass truck? This isn't even my truck. This is not even Maximus right now. Oh man. This truck is janky, it smells, man. Okay, well, it's too late now. I've taken the gerb, so, uh, gotta do it, right? Alright, well, this is all good. This is all good. We'll come, we'll come back and get Maximus at some other point. I don't know where he's gone, though. Um, you know what I think I did? Like, we went to the job market, and we went quick job, I guess? I don't know, man. Who knows? Who knows what just happened? But it's all good, man. We're in this janky-ass truck. We're going to make this really quick delivery. Check, it's got a little GPS on the dashboard there. That's kind of cool. Um, but, uh, yeah, we're on, we're on our way to Germany, guys. That That's all good, man. We're in a new truck. It's all good. Uh, Maximus needed a rest anyway, man. We've been driving that truck into the ground. Um, he needs to be repaired. He's got, like, 3% damage on his ass. So I'll get my engineers all over it, man. He's going he's gonna to be... He's going to get ready for his next job which will it's probably going to be in a while i guess <laughs> um but anyway guys so back to my story about my time as a skater so i still remember uh going to the skate shop for the first time to buy a skateboard and there's a whole bunch of variables to consider like what is the skateboard made out of what wood is it made out of how rough is the surface of the skateboard like the the grip of the skateboard what are the wheels made out of what are, like what what are the, the size of the bearings that you have what are like what metal are the trucks made out of the trucks are like the the metal things that hold the the skate the the, the wheels themselves like what uh, speed do the wheels turn at determined by the bearings that you have in there like there it is ridiculous bro it, it's it's like way more than just like buying a piece of wood with wheels on it and anyway, I spent a couple hours in the shop, like, after doing some research in a skate mag, and I spoke to, to, like, the guy there who was a skater, and I said, look, I'm a beginner, I don't, like, want a, like, a pro board, I'm just looking for something, like, that I'll be able to, you know, get on, get on and, like, teach myself how to skate in my, in my freaking driveway for two months. And he was like, yeah, man, I got the perfect board for you. He gave me, like, a, like, a super hard board skateboard, um, that would last, like, a long-ass time that, ooh, nope, don't need the windscreen wipers on. Um, the, the, the bearings he gave me were quite soft, so um, the, wheels didn't, the, the, the wheels didn't spin like super, super fast, right? There was quite a lot of friction in the bearings, so it's much easier to balance because your skateboard doesn't just fly from under your feet. Like when your bearings are really loose, um, as soon as you stand on the skateboard, your, like the weight from the generated, or the momentum generated by your weight can just like shoot the skateboard out from under you if you don't have your balance correct. So if you have like quite, um, soft bearings then when you stand on the skateboard it doesn't move that much underneath you so it's much easier that way so anyway there, there's a whole bunch of technical jazz about skating man all you skaters out there will know what i'm talking about but um i got the skateboard it cost me it cost me a lot of cash man at the time it cost me like a, like one month's salary i was working as a waiter it was a freaking expensive ass skateboard man uh, but i decided you know what if i'm going to be a skater i need to get like a proper skateboard i don't want to get like a janky ass noob skateboard and then all the guys would like laugh at me uh, at the skate park or whatever you know i'm going to get myself like a really sweet skateboard so that's what i did and then i got back home and uh i i practiced every day for like two hours i was in that driveway just skating around in circles practicing tic tacking that's when you like uh um you lift the front of the skateboard up and then put it down again with force so you give yourself some forward momentum and you do that in a left right sort of fashion and that makes you like go forward and then i was practicing all kinds of stuff man i was pra practicing like trying to turn around like trying to like flip uh, switch the skateboard around right so if you're if you're moving forward with your left foot at the front of the skateboard you can switch it around so that your your right foot is at the front of the the skateboards and and you do that by doing like a little slide with the wheels and stuff and I started practicing some tricks near the end of it. I was doing like 180 flips and, and all that sort of stuff. And I was, I was practicing ollieing. And, and, and ollieing is like the technical ter term for jumping on a skateboard. And uh, the 
basically it was the ollie that would be the end of my skating career but uh we'll, <laughs> we'll get into that in a little while so i got pretty good at, at just like general skateboarding being able to balance being able to just like ride on the skateboard and uh travel along the road and, and i used to go to the shops and stuff on the skateboard and go to town and ride on the skateboard and stuff so it was awesome and i, I went back to university with my new skateboard and I, I i went skating with my my friends oh where am i going oh i need to go this way Ooh, man that was close oh we're in germany right now man are we going to be able to hit the autobahn which is like a highway that you can drive at whatever speed you want oh that would be epic um, um, <laughs> so yeah, so I got, I, I got back to university and I was like, hey guys, I'm a skater now, man. I got a skateboard, it's freaking sweet. Um, I'm gonna go skating with you guys every day. And we, we literally went skating every single day for about a year. Um, and we used to go like to other cities to skate in the different parks. And like, we really, really got into it, man. We were basically like the, the skater guys at, at university. You know, we had like low, like our jeans were falling off our butts. You could see our, our, our butts. <laughs> we used to wear like boxer shorts and you could always see our butts hanging out and we had chains hanging from our freaking pants and like um we had re i don't know man it was freaking sweet we were we were awesome we were hardcore man <laughs> uh, it doesn't sound like we were when i speak about it now but at the time we were freaking hardcore okay and uh, we used to skate a lot and uh, man i got pretty good man i used to be able to like uh do like 180 flips i used to be able to do um, I almost, I, I never really managed to do, do a kickflip, which is when you pop the board into the air and then make, and then flip it like uh, you, you make the board spin underneath your feet and then land on it again. That is some hardcore jazz, man. Because if you, if you don't do it properly, you can either land like on the, the high end of the skateboard or on the wheels and you can just fall on your ass and break your ass. <laughs> and uh, I had a lot, of, a lot of big falls like when I was skating and I had a lot of uh, pretty painful falls. Like we didn't skate with pads or anything like that. And uh, what we eventually started doing was was like grinding, which is where you like hop up onto like a rail or onto a bench, and you slide down the middle of the rail like with the with the center of your skateboard, right? Uh, so you, so yeah, so you, you you can like you can do railing and stuff like that. And we started doing all of that sort of jazz. And I don't know, I got it like a little bit confident, and I was like, yeah, man, we're getting pretty good at this. I mean, we practiced a lot. Like we probably should have been studying. But uh, like we were skating, man. Like skating was way better, like way more fun than studying, right? I mean, studying? Pfft, this is that is lame. <laughs> and no, it's not. Uh, studying is actually really good. <laughs> but at the time, I was like, whatever, man. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm a skate, I'm a skate. And uh, I remember one day we decided we were gonna make like I don't know. It was like a Sunday or something, and we were like, okay. We, we used to skate in the car park of this of the supermarket. It was a, a, an awesome car park because it was really smooth, flat concrete, right? And it was the place where the supermarket took deliveries. So the floor had to be flat so they could drag like the, the tonnage of stuff that they were bringing into the shop, like along the floor, right? So it was a super awesome place to, to skate. But the only way we could get in there was like jumping over the wall. And the, the supermarket was only ever closed on a Sunday. So we could only ever skate in this, this place on a Sunday. So my mates and I went there one Sunday and we jumped over the wall and we decided to make like a kind of like a, like a, I don't know, like a park, right? So we got a whole bunch of like crates and bricks and rails and, and everything that we could find that we wanted to skate. Like we, we brought it with us in our cars, we put it in the boots of our car and uh, we drove it all there and carried it over. Um, we're gonna have to take a turn over here. Uh, I carried it over the wall and we basically set up like this janky skate park in, in, the, in, in this delivery area of the supermarket. And uh, we had an amazing day, man. We were just like skating, grinding, jumping. Like we were setting uh, goals and, and setting challenges for each other to try and like uh, get better at skate skateboarding. Like, you know, I would say to my mate, okay, try kickflip over that brick. And then he would try and do it. And it was just, it was awesome. It was a beautiful, beautiful day. And uh, we had an amazing time. And uh, at the end of the day, the day came to an end and it was time to like go back to our our, uh, our residences and go have dinner and, and whatever and like get ready for the week to come. Um, we would like, we were packing up and like packing up all of the bits and pieces that we brought to the park. Now there seems to be like some sort of a roadblock going on over here. I don't know, it looks like uh, that truck is, I don't know, it hasn't turned properly. Hurry up! Get out of here, man! <laughs> Man, I might have to like just, I might just have to wing this right now. Yeah, I'm a wing it. I don't have time to wait. Ain't nobody got time for this. I'm out of here, man. Smell y'all later. Jeez, check out this roadblock, man. Yeah, oh, oh. 
Yeah. Dude, um, you are in the base. You're in sinking sand right now, buddy. I, I suggest you get your ass out of that truck because uh, things are not about are about to not be very good for you. <laughs> well, I'm getting out of here ASAP, man. <laughs> Smell you <all> later. <laughs> um, so anyway, guys, we we were at the end of our skating day and we were packing up the park and uh, we were skating back to our cars, like through the car park of the of the of the shopping center, and there was a brick in the car park. Now this brick was probably no more than, I don't know, 10 centimeters or a couple of inches high. And it was just a brick, right? Like, you know, as high as your fist, I guess. And that day I had been ollieing or jumping over like stacks of four or five bricks, like pretty high stacks of bricks I was jumping over, right? Because like we've been skating for quite a few years. So we, we like, like jumping on a skateboard was easy for us. And uh, I was just skating along there and I thought, okay, well, like I'm gonna be clever, right? I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna hop over this little brick over here and then uh, get back to my car and then we'll go back and have dinner and stuff. Cause that night there was a gig uh, in the city that our university was in and, and it was a band that we really liked, a South African band that we really liked and we wanted to go and see them. And uh, I, I hopped over that brick. I tried to ollie over that brick and uh, basically, basically um, I pushed my front foot up the, the skateboard too far and my front foot went over the front of the skateboard and when you ollie like you, you you jump as you basically jump as high as you can right like that's how you ollie like you you push down into the board and then jump up as high as you can so i jumped really really high my front foot went over the front of my skateboard so when i came down i literally came down on the very front of the side of my foot so i came down uh, on the ankle side on the outside ankle of my foot the entire weight of my body crushing into the ligaments of my foot tearing the ligaments basically from my foot from my ankle bone and literally twisting my entire foot in a 180 degree turn to the right hand side of my leg and i i, I basically wrecked my ankle in one fail swoop now the sad thing about the story is is that i wrecked my ankle jumping over a tiny brick when earlier in the day I'd been jumping over like stacks of four or five bricks. It was like the lamest way to injure yourself in skateboarding. Like if you're a skateboarder and you're gonna like do a serious injury on yourself, what you wanna do is like go out with a fight, right? You wanna go out with a bang. You wanna go out like, like kick flipping over a car or like doing something crazy like that, you know? So that like all of your skateboarder buddies will remember you. Like he was a good skater, he wrecked his ankle, but he did it kick flipping over a cow. <laughs> Oh no, I was remembered as the new butthole who kickflipped over a, a brick and broke his ankle doing it. <laughs> and uh, it, my ankle was wrecked, man. And my mates had to like pick me up and carry me to the car uh, to take us back to the hostel. And those bastards, we only had like half an hour to go before the gig. Those bastards were like, dude, uh, we're going to the gig. Like we're not gonna be able to see this band again for a long time. So sorry, but we're going to the gig. And they literally, dropped me outside the hostel with my skateboard and I had to drag my ass into the hostel and up two flights of stairs to my freaking room. I mean, what buttholes? Like, what kind of friends are those, man? I mean, they took me to the, the, like, the nurse's office before and the nurse like strapped up my ankle and booked in an x-ray for the next day. But then after that, they just dropped me off at the hostel. They didn't even help carry me up to my room. Man, freaking buttholes. <laughs> And uh, anyway, guys, it took about two years for my ankle to fully recover after that. And by that stage, I'd like sort of grown out of skating. I didn't really want to skate anymore. And I don't think my ankle is actually as strong as it used to be. So even if I start skating again, I think I, I, if, even if I just like twisted it or fell on it or put too much pressure on it, I think I could probably rip that injury again and like just do maybe like permanent damage to my ankle. So I don't really want to do it again. But I, I love skating so much. It was one of my favorite things ever. And in, in many ways, like skating and, and skating culture, defined who I was and, and who I became like the music I listened to like the bands I went to watch the movies I liked like it basically defined who I was so it was a really important uh, like time in my life and I think I'll probably tell you guys a few more skater stories because uh, man we had some seriously good times but guys we are now on our way to Daisborg in Germany and uh, we have got about 43 miles to go but we have come to the end of this episode really hope you enjoyed it man um and if you are a skater yourself and you have any stories to tell me skater stories hit me up in the comment section below if not thanks for joining me on this epic road trip and uh it's been awesome 
Cannot wait to, to see you guys behind the wheel of this truck one more time in the next freaking episode of Euro Truck Simulator 2. This has been Rendog driving and telling your asses a story, and we will see you in the next video. Goodbye, my friends. <laughs>